Hey. Hey, hey, how's it hey. going? Good, it's going well. Good. Um, I'm a little sore. I've been having uh, hip issues. Okay. What's, yeah. uh, what's happening? Are you finding, uh, is this something that's happening while you're riding or after your rides? Uh, it's mainly going, uh, yeah, yeah, like I'm getting hip problems mainly after the rides. After your rides, okay. Yeah. Uh, face that way. Turn around and walk back towards me a bit. Okay. A little bit further. Okay, just hold this up. Okay. And then lock your knees out straight. Okay. And uh, stand up straight though. So don't look down, look straight ahead. Yeah. Okay, now what I want you to do is keep your knees straight, bend at your hips to touch your toes. Slowly bend at your hips. Yeah, you're really rotated. Okay. All right, let's go on your stomach now, face down. So that's likely what's going on here is you've got a bit of a rotation happening in your pelvis, which okay. is gonna change the way your, your leg stroke is on the bike on one side versus the other. You may be rocking over the saddle Okay. one side more than the other and then that the one knee may be cycling in instead of just being straight up and down sometimes what can happen is the knee can kind of deviate like almost like it's going in a circle okay. as you go up and down instead of just straight up and down in a line some of those imbalances will eventually stress the knee out a lot but it also creates some back issues can also be why you might be putting more pressure on the outside of your foot which also can be responsible for the numbness you're getting on the outside of the foot it can also be fit of the shoe but if your pelvis is misaligned and that's creating a little bit of a leg length discrepancy, you're gonna have asymmetric movement of your knees and feet on the pedal. So we need to look at that. So let's go in your stomach first. Okay, and then let your arms go off the table there. Put your nose in the paper straight ahead. And we want you to have to, everything to be straight for this. Okay, so we just, just wanna check a few different things. Okay, there and just let everything relax yeah there's quite a bit of a difference so this hip doesn't internally rotate as much as this so there's this asymmetry but that's one of the things that happens when the pelvis is rotated yeah and the same thing here so this one's going further than the other side so okay let's that relax again yeah okay getting cyclist tips <laughs> you're getting tight <clears throat> especially this one so definitely a, a major imbalance going on so we have to we gotta figure this out get it released now that you're doing the bigger miles your body will start to notice it <laughs> um, yeah. and the little little asymmetries start to create issues like whether it's pain or stiffness um, You'll start to, yeah, that's really tight in there as well. Okay. okay. Now this is also, this being tight here as well can also be responsible for some of the tingling that's getting happening in your foot. So it's a possibility, but it's definitely go, is a reason why your this knee's getting sore because your hip flexor's short. Okay. Your external rotators are tighter than they should be. It's affecting your internal rotation. So these, both these knees are going to be moving differently on the bike and you're definitely going to be rocking on the saddle to one side, which also usually can oh, lead to your back. One side. Yeah, like that's fine, that, right? That sounds that's like brutal. That, oh, that sounds like. Yeah, so we gotta, it's not happy. Now, wait, is that you or who is, like, oh, what special specialty? Uh, to, fix, to release position? all that? Oh, yeah. that's that's what I can do. So we can oh, get that worked out for you. And then. Because um, I didn't know I didn't know who to ask or who to even, like. Oh, ask. any chiros, physios, okay. all can do this kind of work. Um, it's a combination of some soft tissue work. Sometimes we use needling, mobilizations or adjustments. Okay. Um, there's, and then of course, there's some stretching and rolling that you could be doing to maintain it. <laughs> to prevent the imbalance. first holy crap now that's good let's lie on your right side down <clears throat> right side down okay and right side down like this yeah okay. that's good okay we're gonna go like that okay 
I want this leg just off the table, let it fall okay. like that, okay? And just kind of stay there for me. We just want you rotated a bit here so I can get into the cue a little bit better. You okay there? Uh, okay. Here, okay. you're gonna stay on your side there though. Okay. Sit back on the side, back up towards me. Okay. And then go up on your right shoulder a little higher so you can bring this arm across now. Okay. Bring it, but yeah, there you go, okay. just like that. Now bend the bottom knee. Okay. And bring okay. that one up. Okay. So what I want you to do here is you're gonna hug this knee and pull it up towards your chest, but bring kind of keep it along the table. Okay. And you can so hug it. You know, when you get to the top, you want to hug it with your arm right to as high as you can. Okay. 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 So just slow. Go nice and slow. Keep going all the way up. Keep pulling it all the way up. Good. Back down. And again, slowly pull that up. Keep your knee on the table. So try to keep it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, back down. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Ow. Oh, God. Ow! Ow! Oh God! Stay in that position. Back up a little more towards me. Okay. Okay. You're gonna lean into me. Okay. Kind of let it yourself relax there. I'm okay. gonna work on a muscle deep in here in your hip flexor. Okay. okay. And then bring this knee up to here. Okay. And just kind of um, give me all your like just fall into me. Okay. And try not to push into me or anything. Just relax. Okay. Let that go. Okay. Give me your weight. Now, nice deep breath in, all the way out, and just kind of let that relax. <clears throat> that clunk is because your one muscles one muscles flicking over the other because it's too tight. Okay. That's a sign that there's a lot of tension in there. You can feel it though. I'm gonna do a little adjustment pelvis. Okay. So come over this way towards me. Okay. Stay on your side though. Okay. And like that. Bring this one under. Okay. And that one down. Okay, let everything relax. Okay. And just uh, deep breath in, all the way out. No getting roll here, I got gotcha. you. Oh. Perfect. Something there, good. Same thing, nice deep breath in, all the way out. Let that shoulder go back. Okay, there we go. That's equal now. So, okay. Yeah, you needed that. Um, but you need to roll, you using a roller or yeah. using a ball too? No. Okay. I, I, should, what, I need ball? to get you to roll, get a, a tennis ball or a massage ball. Okay. And release this here. It's will work better than a roller. Okay. So um, I'll grab one. I'll release the glutes, which you're probably already doing. But for some of the smaller spots, you need something more like that. That's smaller. Okay. Because that's going to dig in a little bit deeper. And what you can do is you can lay down on it and just kind of roll around like this until you hit the spot okay. and then kind of roll on it hold it there for about 30 seconds kind of move over hit another spot and just sort of work your way through all the sore spots okay um you know with to whatever comfort level you can have the same thing as the foam roller yeah, yeah. you're just going to notice that in the deeper external rotators the foam roller is too big it won't get deep enough to release them it, it'll get the large glutes like yeah. the maximus glute medius you need this to get the piriformis, all the external rotator gemelli muscles, and um, anything that's kind of deeper. And that's it's a great tool. So really, you should have a massage ball plus a roller to kind of okay. get all the hips and everything. It's great too if you ever have something in your hamstring, you can get in a little deeper this way. Okay. The problem with the foam roller, we got them. We'll get okay. you. One. We'll give you one. There, that's yours. <laughs> when you need to get something specific or in smaller, deeper areas, yeah. that's going to work better. Or you got to, say you got a specific knot in your hamstring, often the roller just kind of goes over it but doesn't get into it. Yeah. You can sit on that and that's going to dig in a little deeper that's and like work a it out. Ball. That's all it is. Yeah. Cool. It's just a orange synergy girl lacrosse ball. Things are moving equally now, right? We've got we've got the adjustment, we release the muscles, but you can't usually release 100% of it in just one treatment. It's sometimes, but not usually. 
and then you're gonna go do a bunch of riding this week. So we probably wanna look at it again in a couple days, release it again a couple times and it'll we'll get it out of there. Right. And then you just gotta maintain it with the ball, the rolling, the stretching, all the other yeah. stuff you're learning. And uh, that's just how, you know, cause it's ongoing maintenance with cycling. Like, you know, yeah. we could work all this out and then it could all come back in a week from now if you do a huge hill workout or you're, sure. you're sitting off, or you're rocking on the bike still. The ne well, actually, if this was a recurring issue or it becomes one, and it's actually probably not a bad idea in the first place, is to have you on a, on the bike on a trainer. Okay. And then I do a video analysis. It's different than the video analysis you would have had with Bill, which is more for to make sure the bike fits right. I'm gonna look at it more from like mechanical imbalances, like within your body, okay. that are cr creating rotations or pivoting over the seat or whether your knees wandering in and out, like more medial lateral on one side than the other. Um, little differences like that because those things do lead eventually to some sort of either injury or a tight spot or pain or a trigger point, something can develop. develop. And if we catch those early, we can actually prevent them because sometimes we can make changes to the bike yeah. and other times it's like, oh, okay, you're weak on that side, that adductor, but not this adductor. Well, we can fix that through strengthening in the gym or one external rotator seems to be weaker than the other. It's not stabilizing your knee. We can fix that with exercise in the gym, right? So there's ways to cool. fix these little imbalances. And then eventually once they're all fixed and you're training regularly, it's less likely to have imbalances, less likely to get injuries or reuse stuff. So. There's lots we can still do, but this is kind of typical when people start bringing their miles up. Um, there's a point where you, you hit a mechanical threshold for your body, yeah, and that's when things start to kind of go off, and that's when we need to reevaluate and see what's actually happening, find ways to fix it, solutions to prevent it, and then you can move to your mechanical threshold goes up. And so your volume, your intensity, your durations can be bigger now because you're, we've removed this mechanical barrier. And everybody has them, right? Especially when you're first starting any sport, you're gonna hit those barriers, we remove them, then you go higher, we remove them. And you know, until of course you get up to what's physically possible. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome, thanks. No problem.